So, you want to make some stylized textures for your model. Today I'll show you my process of how to make stylized textures. The principles I'll show you today will apply to a wide range of use cases and to nearly all software out there. If you want to follow along, you must have a model, obviously, AO and curvature maps. We will need them, so bake them in your software of choice. Today I'll use Substance Mater, but you can use Blender, Mixer or Marmoset. Today I'll also use this barrel model. And yes, this is a low poly with all the maps baked from a sculpted high poly. But you can use any model you have, as long as it has good enough UVs and enough polygons to make use of AO and curvature maps. And if you want to double with this model and or the Substance Painter file, you can have them and support the channel on my Patreon. Link is in the description. Alright, let's start with adding the basic materials. Here it's wood and metal. For wood, I'll add this wood rough texture. And here I want to change some of the settings, light height range and intensity to kinda tune it down a little. Now we have a really nice base wood material, but I need this just for those high details. So next I'll add a fill layer with some nice wooden color. And as you can see we don't have any color details. So now we need to kind of recreate the wood texture from scratch. To do that, add a darker fill layer at 60% opacity. And for the first tip of the day, to add a baked map as a texture in Substance Painter, add a black mask, add a generator and then add the needed map. In this case, the curvature. Here I'll set the blur 2.66 and balance 2.67 to make it more organic. One more thing that we can do to improve any kind of baked texture map is adding a noise texture on top of it with a blending mode set to subtract. This will break down the smoothness and add a bit of realism. Here I'll set it to 60% opacity to keep it subtle. Alright, the last piece of the wood texture is a wood grunge texture. So add a darker orange fill layer and add a grunge wood hard texture as a mask. Don't forget to rotate it and add a noise with 40% opacity and with the blending mode set to multiply this time to add a bit of wear and tear. Now we finish the wood and I want to group it all together with shortcut Ctrl G to keep things organized. Ok, so for metal I'll just start with creating folder and naming it metal and for the textures I found it's best to start with the steel rusted material but as you can see when I add it, it will be everywhere so I need to mask it off. To do that I need to add a black mask to my metal folder and then using the polygon fill with in my case UV chunk fill to select the metal parts of my model. And there's one more thing that I need to do here. That is I need to copy the mask from my metal folder then paste it and invert it on my wood folder. That way no height or normal textures from wood will affect the metal parts of my model. I and all that got us this nice metal material, but it looks too realistic and we need to tweak it. So remove dirt occlusion and sharpness, set edge highlight to 24% and roughness 2.4, edge damage to 11%, roughness is layers roughness 2.9, base color to something a bit darker and its roughness 2.5. Yeah, that's a lot of numbers, but I'm showing you this so that you can learn what they all do. Ok, so now it starts to look good, but still it can be better. One more detail that we can add is rust, because it's a barrel, it's supposed to be rusty. So add an orange fill layer at 70% opacity, a roughness of 0.9, disable all channels except color and roughness, then add a curvature map as a mask and invert it. Set blur to 0.5 and balance to 0.8. And in the curvature settings set everything from sharp to medium to 1 and from large to huge to 0. Once you do that, Add a noise texture with a contrast of 0.6, balance of 0.5 and a subtract blending mode once again. Ok, all the basic materials are done, so now we need to talk about the most important part. So listen up. The stylization aspect comes from the two main elements, highlights and shadows or the dirt. Here I'll add two highlight layers, so for the first highlight I'll call mid just create a white fill layer with just the color channel active with a curvature mask. Then just set the balance 2.5 and the contrast 2.5. And then set the blending mode to divide and set the opacity to 50%. Now as you can see this adds a really nice highlight effect. But I want to make this effect more apparent. So I'll create a duplicate of this layer 
name it highlight top, set the opacity to 70% and change the curvature balance to 0.22 and the contrast to zero. This will create a second highlight with more contrast so that it will affect only the fine edges. And just so you know, I turn this view on in here. And it's really useful whenever I'm working on any kind of mask. And now that our highlights are done, we can move on to the shadows and the dirt. In this case, I'll combine the two in one layer. So let's add a purple fill layer with a roughness of 1 and an inverted ambient occlusion mask with a balance of 0.22. But hold on, did I say it right? Why make it purple? Well, this is a technique that some of you may recognize as hue shifting. And as the name implies, when you shade an object for highlights, you shift the hue towards the warmer tones and towards the cooler tones for the shadows. But here I intentionally amplify this effect because I just think it looks great in this case. But this is a very versatile method that you can use in texturing or in general when you create art. I'll link this article in the description for those who want to dive a bit deeper. But anyway, let's add a noise texture and move to the dirt. I'll add this noise gradient texture, but you can just combine some noise with a position mask and get the same result. I'm just saying. With this noise gradient, set the projection to cylindrical, then add a positional mask with an overlay blending mode at 70%. This will make the dirt affect the bottom of the model the most. Look at the difference made just by having those three layers. And yes, this is it. So let's recap. We've added the basic materials, wood and metal, fix them to look a certain way, then we've added the special sauce, the highlights, and then the shadows and the dirt. Those principles are at the base, and they are pretty widespread even outside of 3D modeling sphere. For example, this same technique is used in hand painted models to add depth to the paint job. For example, here's a video where a model is first painted with a dark color and then dry painted with a progressively brighter colors to get those highlights. And obviously the process is different from what we need to do, but the method of shading is still the same. And this isn't just used one time on the entire model. Here's a video where the creator uses this on many different layers. And maybe you didn't notice it, but I did use the exact same technique to add those shadows on the wood. So yeah, this is a very useful method that you can use to make any kind of model look stylized, shaded, hand painted, whatever you want to call it. So now I would encourage you to go and try it out on your own to imply in practice all the things that you've learned today. Yeah, this is it. Don't forget to check the links in the description, like, subscribe and bye bye.